are delighted to have our first ordination ever in a residential community that is part of Presbyterian Homes. It is a great joy that we partner together. And I welcome you, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and you instituted the office of word and sacrament so that the apostolic and prophetic work might continue throughout the ages. Grant that Lu Cheng, now to be ordained, may carry out this ministry faithfully in the power of your spirit through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, Amen. We sing together the opening hymn. Praise to the Lord, who will prosper your work and be fair. When I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? I said, Here I am, send me. Li Ting is remarkable. She is remarkable. You come, Li Ting, from a place where the Christian faith is under a lot of pressure. You have persevered, and you've even thrived in a country and a culture here that is not your own. I know it hasn't been easy. You left your family, your friends, all that is familiar and comfortable, and you entered graduate study in a difficult subject, theology, and you did it in your second language. You have no, think about this folks, she has negotiated her way through Greek and Hebrew. She studied Martin Luther and the history of the church. She did an internship at an urban Minneapolis congregation. She has completed an extended unit of CPE, and she's been at the bedsides, as all of you know, of the sick and the dying. She's remarkable. There's a steely determination about Li Ching that's seasoned with a great deal of kindness and patience. Li Cheng, I want to say, both that sense of determination and that kindness and that patience are going to serve you well as you lead in God's church. Furthermore, contact with leprosy made you religiously unclean. She probably faced a series of rituals to regain entry into her faith. And then finally, there is the gender issue. She's a woman, and she's entering a very male space. The men are at the table, they're eating, and the presence of a woman would not, would not have been welcome. It's crazy if you think about it, all the lines that she is crossing. And, and we are not even told her name. But most startling of all you see in this story is that she has this alabaster bottle of expensive perfume, probably worth a year's wage of a typical laborer. And in dramatic fashion, what does she do? She smashes open this flask and she pours the ointment on the head of Jesus. Jesus' disciples are shocked. Well, they say, this bottle might have been sold for 300 denarii, the money given to the poor. And of course, they are right. And horribly wrong at the same time. The disciples are like people who know the price of everything and the value of nothing. It takes another one who also crossed lines to intervene in the situation. 
Jesus appears and he scolds these skulls. Leave her alone, he says. She's anointing my body for burial and what she has done will be known wherever in the world the good news is preached. Li Qing, you stand in the tradition of this woman. I know from many conversations that we have had down through the years that you have wondered about whether women are fit to preach the gospel and be an ordained ministry. Those have been honest and open conversations. Well, I want to say to you this morning, may this woman with the alabaster jar put those doubts to rest. You see, you too carry this alabaster bottle and you enter into spaces sometimes where you might not be welcome. And you too, you too are called to smash some jars to let the oil run out and anoint Jesus as the crucified Lord. I know that sounds really dramatic. I know that, but think about it. As you know, many of the people that you are called to serve are alone, they're forgotten, they're shunted aside, they're forsaken. In fact, the same darkness that encroached on Jesus encroaches on them. But you also, Li Qing, you have something to bring to them. You have a word, you see, that breaks open a whole new world. It's a word of hope to those who have bodies imprisoned in pain. It's a word of life to those whose spirits are tired and whose, whose days are both long and short. It's a word of peace that you bring to those who are troubled by things that they've done and by things they have left undone. And let's be clear, Li Qing, it's not your word. You don't own it, you don't possess it. You're the messenger, you're the vessel. You're like the woman carrying the alabaster jar. The entire focus in that story was on this unnamed woman. The entire focus, her entire focus, was on Jesus. Like John the Baptist, your ministry is about pointing to Jesus and saying, he must increase while I must decrease. In other words, Li Cheng, it's not about you, and I know you know this, but it's about the Holy Spirit's use of someone like you who is called to break open the bottle and fill the air with the perfume of God's word. The other thing I want to lift up about this story, Li Cheng is an ordained servant of Christ. You are called to be bold as well, like this woman was bold, but that does not always mean brash. The woman in our story, she never even says anything. Think about that. She never says anything, and yet she proclaims Christ. This could also be the case at the times in your ministry. It might be the words you speak, of course, but it also might be that hand that you hold in silence. It might be making the sign of the cross on the forehead of someone. It might just be your presence in someone's room. Dietrich Bonhoeffer once reminded us that sometimes it's wiser to speak to Christ about a neighbor than to speak to a neighbor about Christ. So in other words, breaking the jars, letting that oil run out, that can take many shapes and many forms. May, Li Cheng, may the Holy Spirit give you the discernment in such matters and forgiveness too when you fail, because we all fall short in this very joyous, and difficult calling. And so, Li Qing, as you embark on this great adventure of ordained ministry, may you be given the courage and the wisdom to cross some lines, to break open some, to break open some jars, and anoint Jesus with your words and your deeds. May you draw strength from the community of faith that surrounds you. That's especially true, of course, of Bain, it's true of your family and your friends. And may the church whose service you have now entered also support you with mentors and prayers and learning. And finally, Li Qing, finally, may you know that this faith that has embraced you always points beyond itself to a world that really needs the good news of Christ, the Anointed One, crucified and living. Amen. Thank you.
I present for ordination to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament, Lin Chin Chu, who has been prepared, examined, and approved for this ministry, and who has been called by the church to this ministry through Presbyterian Homes and Services. Thanks be to God. Our reading from John, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Will you assume this office, believing that the church's call is God's call to the ministry of word and sacrament? I will, and I ask God's help. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace? Will you pray for God's people, nourish them with word and sacraments, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living. I will, and I ask God to help me. And especially for the congregation at Stonecrest Living Center, that your comfort, healing, and hope would anoint their lives and shape their community. God of mercy. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, pour out your Holy Spirit along Li Ching and bring her, fill her with the gifts of grace for the ministry of word and sacrament. Make her a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, and a wise counselor. Grant that in all things she may serve without reproach, that your people may be renewed and your name be glorified in the church. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive this stool as a sign of your work and live in obedience to the Lord Jesus, serving his people and remembering his promise. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Pastor Lynn, these are for you, and I thank you for what you did for me. Hear the words of the apostles. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. In speaking for the church of Jesus Christ throughout the world, I'm going to ask you to make some promises to this young pastor. Will all of you assemble as the people of God and speaking for the whole church receive Pastor Lynn as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent by God to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard her as a servant of Christ? We will, and ask God to help us. Will you pray for her, help and honor her, work for her work's sake and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ. We will ask God to help us. Let it be a claim that Li Chin is called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ. She has Christ's authority to preach the word of God and to administer the sacraments, serving God's people as together we bear God's creative and redeeming love to all the world. Amen. Praise be to God. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you.